<coughs> All right. Hey, friends. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. We are going to be looking at Genesis chapter 34. All right. I hope you guys have had a blessed day. Um, God is so good. You know, I want to take a minute right now to first off just say happy Mother's Day to all of you amazing mamas out there. I mean, I'll probably say it again before the video is over because mothers and fathers mean a lot. They, they, mean, they mean everything. There's a reason that mothers and fathers and the respect that we should have to, for them and the position that they should have and, and how that should be carried out it is integral to the Ten Commandments, amen. It wasn't just happenstance. It wasn't just by accident. It's, it's, it's crucial. We, we, we have to have a generation to replace this generation that is ready to do the work of God. And they can't do that if they're not instructed in the ways of God. Amen. And um, I want to take a minute to say, you know, I don't, I've got viewers from a lot of different places, a lot of different countries too. But here in the United States recently, we had a situation where the state of Utah decided that they were going to pass legislation forcing a certain um, adult entertainment site to actually verify with IDs whether or not people were 18. And this has led to a whole hullabaloo and a lot of really bad takes in the public, uh, the public sphere from people regarding this, this scourge that is that industry and that sort of material pornography if you will um and, and so i just think there's a lot there there's a lot of conversations to be had there's a lot of defending to be had of what is right and there's a lot of of discerning to be had to say hey what you're saying over there that's a wrong argument that's a bad argument and here's the reasons why amen um let's get into some prayer we'll read this um Interestingly enough, this is a topic, this is a, a chapter that has some adult topics in it. It's a remarkably unpleasant chapter following what was a very pleasant chapter 33 of Genesis. It's a real, um, kind of like when you go from being real hot exercising to an ice plunge, it's that sort of a shock to the system, amen, and it provides a lot of room for digging into the scriptures and understanding the frailty of humanity and understanding the, the, the unbelievably fallible nature of mankind and the unbelievably dark hearts that we have when we are living apart, walking apart from God and his instruction. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to come before you today, Lord. I just want to say thank you for waking me up, Lord. Thank you for the for the blood in my veins, for my heart, able to pump it around, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to overcome addiction because you overcame, Lord. Um, we want to praise you in the midst of turmoil, Lord. We want to praise you in the midst of what are chaotic and spiritually darkened times um i would ask that this video lord that it be a nourishment to me and to anyone else out there that we be able to find spiritual meat within these words that can produce spiritual nourishment to foster a more productive more active more true and righteous walk with you lord uh, a, a, a more a more usable walk to the kingdom father god and um I would like to ask for this video to be able to hopefully speak or minister or touch or grab the attention of anyone out there still lost to sin, anyone out there not yet at the foot of the cross, that they would that they would come to realize the, the power of the relationship that they can have with you, Lord, that they come to realize the the need for a Savior, that they come to realize the eternal hope that we have in you, Lord. Help us to be your defenders of the gospel, your proclaimers of the gospel, your, your, your candle that will shine a light, your bright and shining city on a hill, Lord. We would pray for a hedge of protection around the lives of and a blood covering over the hearts and over the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord. Um. You know, there really are a lot of 
A lot of dark things right now, Lord, and we need your help to stay strong, to remain vigilant, to remain faithful, to remain to remain praying for the lost, to remain praying for those who are bringing such darkness and such destruction, Lord. And um just want to ask that you guide us, lead us, and protect us today. And we pray all of this in your mighty and righteous name, Lord. I would also like to ask that all the mothers feel loved and blessed and appreciated and um that'll do lord we pray this in your holy and heavenly name in jesus name amen amen guys um man if you got a mama and 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 she's living boy you better give her a hug you better give her because you know mine still is and i am i am so blessed with that relationship that god has helped to uh, to make amazing after I did so much damage for so many years as an addict. I mean, she stuck by me, but I know what I did. Amen. But, but, but God, man, he makes a way in the wildest of wildernesses. Amen. He makes a way when you're confronted with the Red Sea and the Egyptian armies behind you. He makes a way when you're tempted by the devil and you're starving and you're in the wilderness. He makes a way. Amen. He is a way maker. Amen. He's a pain taker. He's a chain breaker. Amen. He's all of those things and so much more. He is from the alpha to the omega, from the beginning to the end. He is the, he is the source of all that is good and worthwhile. Amen. Let's get into Genesis 34. Now Dinah, by the way, this is titled the Dinah incident in my, in my Bible, um, verse 34, or chapter 34, verse 1. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her. His soul was strongly attracted to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So Shechem spoke to his father Hamor, saying, Give me this young woman as a wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his livestock in the field, so Jacob held his peace until they came. Excuse me. Then Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out to speak, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. But Hamor spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife. And make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us and take our daughters to yourselves. So you shall dwell with us and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Then Shechem said to her father and her brothers, you know what, let me take a break right there for just a second. You know, um, this chapter forces us to come to terms with some things that I think uh, almost all of us, if not all of us, suffer with. I, I, I know I certainly do sometimes. And that is we see something happen that we absolutely know is not right and we make a judgment call towards it. We we step out in our in our emotionality, in our in our in our vengeful emotionality. Right? And say, you know, well what they did was wrong while not being able to see that our reaction to it is still not one approved by God. Verse 11, Then Shechem said to her father and her brothers, Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me, I will give. Ask me ever so much dowry and gift, and I will give according to what you say to me, but give me the young woman as a wife. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor, his father, and spoke deceitfully, because he had defiled Dinah, their sister. And they said to them, we cannot do this thing to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. 
But on this condition, we will consent to you if you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised. Then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us. And we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not heed us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughters and be gone. You know, listening to that, Sherlock Holmes would have probably said, I think there's something afoot. Let's look at verse 18. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. So the young man did not delay to do the thing because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. He was more honorable than all the household of his father. And Hamor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spoke with the men of the city, saying, These men are at peace with us, therefore let them dwell in the land and trade in it. For indeed the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us as wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men consent to dwell with us, to be one people, if every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised. Will not their livestock, their property, and every animal of theirs be ours? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell with us. And all who went out of the gate of the city heeded Hamor and Shechem his son. Every male was circumcised. All who went out of the gate of the city. Now it came to pass on the third day, when they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. And they killed Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah from Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled. They took their sheep, their oxen, and their donkeys, what was in the city and what was in the field and all their wealth, all their little ones and their wives they took captive, and they plundered even all that was in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me by making me obnoxious among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And since I am few in number, they will gather themselves together against me and kill me. I shall be destroyed, my household and I. But they said, should he treat our sister like a harlot? You know, I had a thought just now rereading that for like the the fourth or fifth time here in the last couple days. Um, you know, this awful thing happened to their sister. I think anybody can agree to that. What an awful, what an awful, awful thing rape is. It takes away, it, it, it damages and can even steal away permanently a part of people. You know, and... Um, but it's not, vengeance is for God. Judgment is for God. We're called to be discerning. Amen. But if these guys, you know, they're, they're so ready to throw everything away to defend their sister. And we could say today, we'd say, oh, you know, that's brave. That's this, that's that. And I can see where we get that notion from. But let me just say this. If they had had that sort of ferocity to say, you know, Damn everything else, I'm going to be all in on God. Would this have even happened? Would this have even happened? I'm not saying it wouldn't have, but, but I think that's a question that we need to ask ourselves. We're always so willing sometimes in life to go all in on, on the far side of something instead of going all in from the beginning, instead of going all in the right way. Amen? You know, we'll, um, we'll, 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 let's say, have a house, and the, the mortgage is due, and we, 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 we or, or, or let's say we have a car, and, and the payment is due, and it's due, and it's due, and it's due, and, we, and when we put it off, and we put it off, and we put it off, and then the repo man shows up, and all of a sudden, some of us are ready to commit felonies, we're ready to act a fool, we're ready to go crazy, but we weren't willing to put all that much work in to begin with to get those payments taken care of, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, that's just something that came to me when I was reading that, I wanted to share it with you before I forgot. Um, <clears throat> let's jump back here, guys, to the beginning. We'll see what I have to share with y'all. Gosh, I appreciate y'all so much. It's so wonderful to be able to grow with you guys. And I, I really hope that is what these provide for you. Um, 
you know, I'd always love to know in the comment section, you know, what are your favorite parts? What was your things that stood out in a chapter like this? What were your takeaways? Amen. All right. So hallelujah, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for joining me for some daily bread. And by the way, yet again, happy, mother, happy Mother's Day. You lovely carriers, guardians, and shapers of creation. Now, I'm Rex. I was once a child of perdition, a child of sin, but now I am a son of the Most High. Amen. How wonderful is that? You know, we just read Genesis 34, so stay with me, friends, all right? And let's go walking in the Word. I want to start out with a little bit of overview of what we've read here in chapter 34. Um, so the actions of... of so the actions at Shechem's covenant community, they're a threat. That, that's what we see going on here. Many of these things are a threat from, from the, the rape itself to the, um, to the possibility of this intermarriage, this interbreeding that could lead to, you know, idolatry and so many other forms of decay amongst the, amongst the society. Now, Hamor seeks the um, assimilation of Jacob and company into the local populace. Now, in reading that, I was reminded of leaven, how just a pinch of leaven, just a pinch of corruption, just a pinch of decay, just a pinch of idolatry, just one bad apple is enough to do so much damage. We must be vigilant. You know, um, I brought this up earlier, but it's such a stark contrast as we shift from the lovely worship of chapter 33, I think particularly verse 20 and on was very beautiful but but now here in 34 we have this this jump this juxtapose with this story that is depravity upon depravity upon depravity it, it's one wrong upon another wrong upon another wrong to, to to fight that wrong right um it's like people fighting fire with fire in a black powder factory or something uh -uh. now Bethel and not Shechem may have been uh, a, a better place for the vow to have taken place. But that just didn't happen. And now in 34, we see that neither God nor an active denial or, or stepping away from idolatry is featured here. And this is a, a sad but very real commentary and view on Jacob's current spiritual leadership. Now, Lastly, before we jump into the verses, let's talk about salt on an open wound. Dinah's rape is a, 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 a sad, horrible tragedy. But what follows the rape, it just adds to the vileness. It just adds to the, to the wrongness of the entire situation. Like I said, it's just heaps on heaps on heaps of bad decisions and bad actions. You know... Dinah exhibited an honest desire to meet other women. And what does this get her? It, 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 finds, it finds her abused and violated. It finds her rapist now masquerading as a suitor, as, as a would-be husband. Amen? Let's look at verse 2. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her, and lay with her, and violated her. The root language here is, it's only all the more damning. Um, obviously, we can't tell from Scripture what the exacts of this evil action are, not the specifics. But, but sex before betrothal in and of itself is unacceptable. But almost certainly what's happening here is rape. Let me tell you why. Here the word is translated for us as violated, but the Hebrew has a different connotation. Yes, it has the connotation of violation, but of forced violation. I.e., he saw, he took, he forced. Alright? Let's look at verse 6 really fast, guys. Then Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. Right? So at the very least, the father here, sorry, hold on. The father here is superficially 
unlike his rapist son, in that Shechem's father seeks peaceful alliances and seeks out these intermarriages before acting in any sort of way. Now, we don't know if that's because he's, you know, good to the root, you know, or, or is it just that appearance? Because I'm not going to say always, but you often see people who have these certain characteristics, these certain traits, these certain actions, and you're, you're left to wonder, where did those come from? Not to say that that's always where they come from, but it can certainly be the case. Let's look at verse 7. I have something to say real quick on verse 7. Um, by the way, again, thank you guys for letting me share with you. Um, verse 7 says, And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it, and the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter. A thing which ought not to be done. And that's a point I think we can all agree on. We, we might not be able to agree with the actions that led to that. We might not be able to agree with their actions in retaliation. Or maybe we're still worldly enough that we kind of do that a part of us does. I won't lie, there's a part of me that kind of... Mm, but that's that part we fight against as a child of God. Amen. Um, so a couple things here on verse 7 and, and the framing or the words in Israel. Because we see that and what's important to know is that Israel is not yet a nation at this time. So in the middle of a dark chapter, there is a little kernel here of some of some pleasantness in, in that the way they frame that in Israel, it speaks with the certainty of, of a future nation that will be. Amen. Let's look at verse 12 and talk about dowries for a second. Ask me ever so much dowry and gift, and I will give according to what you say to me, but give me the young woman as a wife. So he says, ask me ever so much. However much you want is what that means. And that word dowry, right? That word dowry was also known as a bride prize. Or in the actual language, it was called a mohar. And a mohar was a payment from a prospective groom for the bride. And this was absolutely a widespread Near East tradition, still a tradition in many places there today, uh, throughout that area of the Middle East and the Levant. Um, and the Near East tradition always would feature a, a set price that was agreed upon in that culture, okay? But we see here how Shechem attempts to go beyond that. He says, you know, just you name your price, Almost like, you know, I, I, I can't speak very highly of the man's judgment, obviously. But I feel like he at least knew that what he had done was gravely wrong. And he was willing to give up any amount of money to try to glaze over this disgusting indiscretion. Let's look at verse 13, the following verse. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor, his father, and spoke deceitfully because he had defiled Dinah, their sister. So again, something afoot. They're speaking one way, but in meaning something else. Which, God doesn't want us to lie to do what's right. You know, we think, oh, well, you know, it's justified to seek this revenge, but I've got to deceive over here to make that happen. Now, <laughs> what I wrote here was, playing stupid games and winning stupid prizes that's not anything new. We might have found a new way to state that, but that action, that, that, that mentality, that, that thing, that's been going on for a long time. And what we see here is that Jacob reaps a whirlwind. Jacob reaps a chaotic storm because of all of this, all of this, all of these dropped balls. And likewise, his heirs, his sons, carry on with similar deceptions, with similar foolishness. Amen. Let's look at verse 15. But on this condition we will consent to you if you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised. So... What I wrote here, that this was like a to-do list of buffoonery. Jacob's sons commit sacrilege in their abusive emptying of, of all religious significance from the, the holy sign of circumcision. What's worse is that all of this is done in service to vengeance. 
for them to be vengeful, right? But God has already told us that, that vengeance is His. He's the judge, amen. He's the one who gets free vengeance. And that, that, is a, that is a gift to us. People don't realize that. But, the, but, but having the act of retribution and vengeance pulled away from you is a good thing because somebody will do something wrong to someone you love and you will react back to them and maybe even to their family. And then guess what? Their family will react back even bigger. And then guess what? Your family will react back even bigger. And death begets death begets death. Just like hate begets hate begets hate. God is the only answer to step over this this, this broken human nastiness that exists. It existed then, it still exists today. How long will we harbor it? Let's look at verse 24, guys. And all who went out of the gate of his city heeded Hamor and Shechem his son. Every male was circumcised. All who went out of the gate of his city. Let's be clear. The, the, <laughs> the Shechemites, they have no, no care for this religious sign, for this upright religious symbol. They have as little care for it as Jacob's sons exhibit. They're only, they're only taking part in this out of service to self, to get these women that they want, to get this power that they want, this land that they want, these relationships that they want. It's all in service to self. They're willing to have it done in service to self, not caring for what it really is. And, 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 and on Jacob's side, Jacob's son's side, they're willing to use it as, as, a, as a sick masquerade to get what they want done. All of it, this beautiful symbol of the covenant that was supposed to, supposed to signify that you were a special people set aside by God and for God. And yet they forgo it to feed the flesh. Yet he fed the flesh when he raped so and so. They feed the flesh with their vengeance. It's all the same. We try to draw distinctions. There's not. All sin is repulsive to God. He'll have no part with it. Amen. Let's look at verse 25, guys. It's the last one we're going to check out today, but then I do have a couple correlating verses um, that we are going to look at as well. Actually, you know what? No, I'm sorry. I've actually got three more. I just I sandwiched them together here at the end to make them fit. <laughs> Let's look at verse 25, friends. Now it came to pass on the third day when they were in pain that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, died his brothers, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. So I want you to notice there the, 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 the careful thoughtfulness in, in doing wrong. They wait. They wait until the third day. I don't know if you've ever had a surgical procedure for or maybe a pretty severe injury, but a lot of times the first day is not... That bad. And it's usually like that 48 hour to 72 hour window where it gets really bad and you're really hurting. And that's what's going on. They waited for this circumcision to take hold and for all of the, you know, the pain and the anguish that would go with such a obviously <laughs> remarkably unpleasant sounding procedure. Um, and, and then they attacked, right? Um, so... We are to submit and walk in God's ways. He alone is judge. He alone is avenger. And Mosaic law is clear. Shechem's sin under the law of God does not warrant such a, a reaction or, or violent action in turn. I want to share something with you, and it's going to be on the Mosaic law. We're going to jump quickly here to Deuteronomy, and we are going to be looking at chapter 22, I believe, yes, Deuteronomy 22, chapter, or I'm sorry, verses 28 and 29, Deuteronomy 22, verses 28 and 29, and this is going to be a little hard to read, right, you're probably not going to like it, most of us here in modernity especially, we have a very certain way we feel about these things, and we have our reasons that we feel that way. But the important thing is to remember is that they're not God's reasons, okay? If a man finds a young woman who is a virgin who is not betrothed, then he seizes her and lies with her. And they are found out. 
Then the man who lay with her shall give to the young woman's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he has humbled her. He shall not be permitted to divorce her all his days. Now we read that and we say, my God, that is disgusting. But the view was, she was defiled either way. This thing had happened. She was defiled. And so if she was going to be honest about who she was from that point on, she would have had to share that with any prospective suitor, which, under the views of the days, would not have likely ever resulted in her finding a, a husband. So instead, this relationship goes on, and she has, as, as wife, the ability, once he passes, to at least claim all of that land, to at least get some some form of semblance back. Is it the way we would think about things necessarily being ideal today? No. But I would again remind us, no matter how uncomfortable it makes us, that we have to view the world through the lens provided by Scripture and not Scripture through the lens that is afforded us by the world. All right? Um, now... What they did here, what Jacob's sons did, Simeon and Levi, what they did here, they, they, this oversteps the doctrine of retribution that was clearly laid out. And such violence, to go one step further, and I brought this up earlier, such violence endangers the lives and households of all involved because, again, violence begets violence. Revenge begets revenge. Vengeance begets vengeance. Okay? And for a more clear look on what God thought of this situation and what it went on, I want us to jump now to Genesis chapter 49, verse 57. Genesis 49, verses 5 through 7, sorry. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. This is God talking. Let not my soul enter their counsel. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. Cursed by their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel, I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. All right, guys. Now, I have something I want to share with you that is a note on verse 29. And it's out of my archaeology study Bible. Verse 29 reads, And all their wealth, all their little ones and their wives, they took captive and they plundered, even all that was in the houses. So this is just interesting is why I wanted to share with you. In the houses, right? The Hebrew, this is an archaeology study Bible from... Uh, Crossway Presses, we're on page 61 here, the note on chapter 34, verse 29. In the houses, the Hebrew actually has the singular house. Now, it may be argued that it is used here in a collectivist sense. However, the word may in fact be referring to one structure. The term can be used of a monumental structure such as a temple or a palace and Shechem had a very large temple structure that has been extensively excavated and dates to the 17th century BC. Now perhaps this was the house singular that the Hebrews plundered. All right. I thought that was just very, um, very interesting. Uh, now, last one here. Let's let's share on verse thirty. Let me read that for you real quick. And again, thank you guys so much for letting me. Verse thirty. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, "You have troubled me by making me obnoxious among the inhabitants of the land." This word "obnoxious" is the same as the word "repugnant." among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And since I am few in number, they will gather themselves together against me and kill me. I shall be destroyed, my household and I. You know, you really, after the beauty of chapter 33, 
And then the dark start to chapter 34, you really want to see us end on a, on a redemptive note, right? And it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Not here. Not, not right here. We end on a, a woeful and wanton chapter, and it closes with a fearful Jacob. With a self-absorbed, fearful Jacob. Not a faithful Jacob. Not an obedient Jacob. Not a Jacob who's leaning into God. Not a Jacob who, who's stepping away from self and towards something greater. Amen. But a, but a Jacob who has who has allowed the world to, to, to infiltrate his flesh. Has allowed it all in. And now he speaks as the world. He acts as the world. The world is self-serving. The world is fearful. That is not the walk for a child of God. Amen. Guys. I love you all so very much. Um, if you're not already subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe to this channel. I promise you it would put an absolute smile on my face. And yes, that looks just as goofy as you can imagine. <laughs> but I would love to have you subscribe. Give that bell a little tap there and you'll get notified every time I drop a new video, which is three long format videos a week like this, plus I drop a brand new YouTube short every single morning at 8 o'clock. I would love to have you join me for those as well. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, video ideas, if you had a verse that spoke to you, a comment that spoke to you, some sort of a question, drop it down here in the comment section. Guys, send me your prayer request if you have them. I promise I will always share the, the things that I need prayer for with you, and I ask you to feel comfortable enough to do the same, that we may come together of one mind, of one accord, as, as the bride of Christ, lifting up that which needs lift up through our intercessionary abilities. Um, you know, we, we've got to be... There's always been a great need for the prayer warrior in the, in the, in the, in the family of God, but there is a need now that is exponential. We need, to, we need to join together and show the synergistic capability of those who walk faithfully with the divine. Amen. Um, also, guys, if, if you're a child of God, if you're saved, if, if you're a born-again believer, amen, you have a story to tell. That's called a witness. That's called a testimony. And brother or sister, in a world where there is so much blah, 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 and, and yada, 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 that is something worth talking about. Now, if you don't feel comfortable talking about it here on the comment section, that's okay. I'm not going to push you on that. But you need to be talking about it somewhere. We can't be given all that we're given at the foot of the cross and then zip our mouths about it. Amen. I don't know about you, but I was out there in my sin. I was loud. I was bold. I was going to do what I was going to do. And you know what? I'm done with the sin, but I want to keep that boldness for God. And I would invite you to do the same. Um, that's it. I love you. God loves you even more. Go out there. Have a blessed day. A blessed evening. Whatever's in front of you, just know that as a child of God, you are blessed. Walk in that truth with certainty. Walk in that truth with vigor. Walk in that truth with pride. And the one thing that we should have pride in, the work of Jesus Christ upon that Roman tree that purchased us at such a high price. That work upon that crucifix that, 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 that has allowed the world to be talking for two millennia about Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, I promise you, we ain't stopping anytime soon. They can talk all of their foolishness. They can spread all of their inclusive, degrading nastiness. We're going to keep trumpeting the way of God. We're going to keep touting the gospel and the power of the message of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I would invite you to join me for that. I would invite you to join me to grow together as believers. And uh, I'll see you guys for that next video, all right? Remember, GOE got over everything.